<laughs> we, all right, this is Twice Red here with... Aaron George, history. <laughs> Trevor Parker. <laughs> and carry your medical expert. And Austin Stanley, who has read at least one book in his life. Yeah. And today we are reviewing Awaken Online... I think it's Catharsis. Catharsis. Book one, Catharsis. Book Catharsis. Book one, which yep. is book, book one or makes, chapter one? Book one. Book one. Book one. Book one. Book one. Book one. By uh, Travis Bagwell. And I think I wanted to take a second before we got into this to mention how I think us as a reading audience... How proud I guess we are of Travis Bagwell because a fellow Texan is he a fellow Texan? I He's from Austin, that. Texas, I think. Or well, I'm just proud of him because this book has gotten onto the. I'm not certain how it's caught fire. It's gotten onto the bestseller list, but it's gotten a a big success and it's self published. Yeah. So that means you know I'm just happy that all the money that we're giving yeah. is going to him. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's been this sort of this wave of there was this early wave of like the Kindle generation and now there's like this new wave of like where Audiobooks with Audible and stuff like that have become so prevalent that we're now even seeing more and more of these books really getting right. broad audience. Because I think out of the four of us, three of this, three of us read this book through Audible. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, one I read, of us. I, so I have Audible, and then when we went to redo this one, I bought the Kindle version so I could actually read the text to see the actual words and see how it went that way. So, so, so Trevor and Aaron physically read. The book as well, whereas yeah. Austin and I only listened to the book, listened to it twice, but only listened through the book. Oh, okay. However, I would say very, I don't know how how they do it with Audible, very top notch. Out of the Audible books, it's a very high quality. It doesn't. Feel, that's another thing that I like about it is it doesn't feel like oh this is some self published dude yeah. who found hey Carrie has a microphone let's get him to try to voice <laughs> catharsis. It would not turn out well. <laughs> it actually has a guy who does voices and sound effects. Behind really the scenes, good. I think sound engineering is fantastic. Yeah, Amazon has some kind of uh, program that you can sign up for, for Audible, whereas you can either they can either contract someone to do it, or you can give them a portion of your sales. And which to me is is more fair than a publisher relationship because yeah. obviously the person who's reading a book has a lot of influence on how that book yeah. is received. So it's fair. Yeah, but they it's fair. Get a, the, whatever value he paid to this person, he got a lot of value out of it. As I said, the Audible. Very top notch production. I mean, it had some great sound cueing, some great uh, yeah, voice actually, acting. Yeah, there's some sound effects in this too. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, there's a very prominent and important sound effect that I, when we get into it, I want to know sort of how they felt about it because it made me. It became one of my favorite sound effects here in the book, and I wonder how well it came across in the reading of it. Okay. Okay. Um, so this book is a. I was called a lit RPG. I That's the say. genre. Yeah. Straight up. So. That's, um, one of our favorites. Well, I don't know growing, if it's my favorites. I, growing it's a growing genre. genre. It's only really been yeah. around in the last. I mean, before this, you had RPG books, which yeah. were like stories from an RPG. Like universe. Drifts and the yes. Dra- yes. Dragon yeah. Realms. It's, it's so like weird because so many of them, while they're about an RPG or in an RPG, never really feel things. like. I've never felt like I'm the character. Yeah. You know, it's oftentimes like yeah. you even look in the Pathfinder books and it's like a solo adventure. Yeah. Even though this kind of is a solo adventure. It felt more like at least there's a person there yeah, in, okay. in the character. Whereas like even sometimes it's like it's just one dude. It's like, well normally you're at a table with at least three other guys. You know, three other people doing this adventure and it's just so often well, I've got a um, an opinion on that same aspect. Um, for book one, you know. Yeah. I'm all trying to yeah, I was trying limit, to keep limit, the, limit to everything to this book one because that is exactly. that is what we're doing. So yeah. uh, the I, the idea that Carrie brings up is the uh, single person, and uh, when we actually delve into it, I'll get to that as well. But this is one of the first ones where I agree. It's like I felt like this is the strongest personification of like you in the book. These are events that are controllable well, in that, some way. Yeah, I think that's a with key, the reader. key element to the lit RPG genre is it's really all, all literature or most literature is about reader insertion into the yeah. characters. But in the lit RPG genre especially strong. Yeah because you're talking about things that the reader probably has a familiarity with and so uh, I know you took some notes. Can you give us a quick plot synopsis of what I, before the book was we get about? into that? I want I wanted to go before we go into this. Uh, before reading this book, have you are you read a lot of lit RPGs? No, this is, this is actually my I've read a lot, a lot of fan fiction, but none that were some that were self insertion. So yeah. it's kind of similar. NPC, this is the NPCs, problem. NPCs, NPCs yeah. is similar, but it's, it's not. It's not the same. I would say it's a lit this, RPG. I don't. I honestly remember what this is they like my second and that's the lit RPG. They do and they don't. Awakening Online really pushed me into reading more. Yeah. It wasn't my first, 
But it's like the one. It's it's that introduction novel. If you had to say, would you like this genre? I don't know. Read this book and make your I judgment. Agree. I disagree. I think I do well, think NPCs fully qualify. It's this, a diversion of it, but I think it qualifies think, it, and they I, do go into the there's some, especially, especially later. There's some crossover between the two, but I think the trademark of a lit RPG is game mechanics entering into the story in some fashion. I yeah, think that's yeah. the hallmark. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's why I say I'm NPCs. Saying that NPCs there's literally dice that. rolling in that book. It's, but it's a different... Uh, let's not go into it. We, yeah. we'll, right, so th- we're talking about... I just, sorry, I, I kind of took the chance. Of, first? No, because I went through uh, another series that led me to this one. So it was by a Russian guy named Ivan Yanko. Oh, and he's in the same... Audible, but I have not read it yet. The Catharsis Gambit or something like that. He's making chess pieces or whatever. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so Ivan Yanko, he's the guy that got me into this one because they're part of the same lit RPG forum group. That's how, like... Okay. Mm-hmm. So there's a whole bunch of they, lit RPGs. What is, what is that name of that forum? Uh, Royal Road? Is that it? It's, it's like or, it's Royal, Royal Road. Road or Pen and Sword or something like that. There's, I, there's several, that there's several lit I, RPG I had read groups. some on Royal Road, but... I really, I don't know if I, any of them were completed. I didn't read any yeah. of them to completion. I, could, this doesn't really compare to those because this is yeah. a, I'm not saying this is the highest quality of literature ever written, but this is a complete book. Yeah. Like full pop, full pop lit, full, it would fit. Yeah. It, if it's not, if, if NPCs doesn't qualify, it would qualify along with NPCs and a lot of these other books we're seeing like now, like We Are Bob, yeah. as sort of like, in their own genre, this kind of like pop lit sort of feeling, like you feel like it's, Really fun to sit down. It's almost like a popcorn read. Like, yeah. It's a sort of a popcorn happy you know what, read. Fan fiction has really gone like mainstream. I would say this yeah. is in the Fifty Shades of Grey. Is a good Grey, point. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so but, Twilight, but, but, t- Twilight, uh, t- um, all the all, all those books that came after Harry Potter. Twilight's kind of yeah. It's not fan fiction, but it's in the same realm. Realm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it really feels like fun lit, like really pop. Exactly. Enjoyable mm-hmm. lit. So you wanted to uh, talk about uh, the plot synopsis here. So um, basically, we start with our main character Jason, who is the, your quintessential outsider, and um, he has some trouble at school, and he discovers Awaken Online uh, as his place to escape into. Um, he enters in the game. He quickly finds out that this is not like other games, and um, he goes on his kind of a divergent past on quests. Yep. He is uh, uh, picked up a new class, the Necromancer. He's the first yep. one to ever take that class. He's given power. He's given power. And then he kind of snowballs from there, whereas he goes to rob somebody, then it, it, he just kind of blows up in power. And the next thing you know, he's converted the entire city. And then there's a big invasion where the bully, from the very beginning yep. of the book, is leading an army to attack him. And they have a knockdown drag out and, awesome uh, fight. What I enjoy about that whole buildup of uh, Jason starting Awoken Online, and it's a big worldwide event. It's a big virtual reality MMO. You put a thing on, you go to sleep, and you dive into this time. It's time compression is a concept they bring in. Mm-hmm. For every like two hours, it's an hour or something similar. Yeah, um, I, and I he he the this game is revolutionary in that there's like no there are no rules. Well, there are, but. The rules are enforced by NPCs, non-player characters. It's kind of an open book of what you as a character can do. And from Jason's perspective, and I love this, you he starts in, he kind of gets like a dark start. Like he's kind of a not evil, but he's like a not good, like the beacon of light. He's kind of a shadowy mm-hmm. character. And they go on to this more in the book. And his start, because of his start, the guards kind of, the town folk kind of see him as shadowy. So he gets a, a he gets a bad start. He doesn't get like all the starting gear. He kind of has to figure things out on his own. He doesn't get his hand held, and through that he begins to discover the system that this in this game I is saw, I, is his own creation. And that's what I love is that I want to do something. When you play as a gamer, when you play a thing, it's, it says open world. Right. That means I want to do something, and there are still mm-hmm. consequences for that action. And now I have to deal with it as they arise. Mm-hmm. Right. I think that's, that's his rise I to power. That's one of the, also another one of the trademarks of the lit RPG genre. Obviously, when you play computer games in the real world, there are constraints, yeah. and you can't just you, you know there are invisible walls mm-hmm. around you, or whatnot. And one of the ideas in the lit RPG genre, you also see this. You know what I talked about? You mentioned other ones we've seen. All the other ones have seen Sword Art Online, yeah. which is one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. In this, in this genre, absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
Also, I'd read the. You know what? Now that I think about it, I've read quite a bit because I've read The Shield, The Hero of the Shield. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. is. That's a Japanese web novel or whatever. Uh, so, in, in his bio, the author's bio, he literally cites uh, Ready Player One okay. and mm-hmm. Sword Art Online. Like, yeah. those are two things, and then he said he got tired of reading, or he was looking for other things and like this, and he says, if I if I don't see what I want to read, I'll write it myself, mm-hmm. and then now he's... But I think what you were getting at there, what you liked about it, is a trademark of the genre, that mm-hmm. that the system, or people who like the idea, and this is, what we, this is what we enjoy out of pen and paper games, is that we have rules, but in computer games, you know, the computer has to implement them, and it's very strict, but in a more generous game, or a game run by a supercomputer or whatever yeah. AI like the idea controller. that we could twist these rules to our mm-hmm. advantage or whatever and that's what happens in the book and it's interesting because I think one of the big things about this book is that it does do well and the whole idea of the, of the catharsis is that it's this idea of this character who's getting this special experience that other players aren't getting mm-hmm. and yet dealing with the idea of how am I you know I'm abusing this power and like how would it feel if you were this other player or this NPC mm-hmm. you know he starts really feeling for NPCs and player I, characters equally to, and it's the, the idea of this sort of like this battling sense in there I, I, a point I wanted to make and I, I guess I, I was going to make it later but I, we can we can start on it now is the fact that I love the little one shots in the beginning of every chapter where really? they talk That's about the setup like this like oh this is something something day uh, before right. the release of, so, a, 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 I, I love that because it tells mm-hmm. the story. And so when you say that no one else were having a similar story, it's it's not true because she says the the one of the player yeah. says that other people are having tough times. Like there was a woman that was going through a divorce, a yeah, woman yeah. that well, that, that was the practice child. trial. That was the previous. That was in the in the past. Yeah, but that's in the but same. I'm saying, but I'm saying, but like were, there was there's probably at least if this is a very brand new game, there's probably at least another thousand characters in Lux. Yeah, and they're all just basically they're wiped the out. Thing. I, hear, yeah. I guess, and they're I, and they're killed. But I, but to go into the idea of this, those pre chapters. Well, so the book is about, set up. Let's talk about okay. when you talk about the catharsis. And I guess I missed that when I was talking about because that's another plot point. Yeah. So the idea of catharsis is, is as you play the game, the game is healing you. Yes. Whatever. And, and, and so and I get said that several saying, times. I, I get what you're saying that that maybe that is something that's happening to other other players. Other players in a lesser. I think that's stuff. a missed opportunity, though, in the book. Yeah. Because they, they don't ever show that. They show it to a degree with... Um, well, that's in the sequel, too. But they show it to a degree with... Uh, not Jason. Alex. Uh, other Alex. characters. Well, and and, and, and Riley. Riley. Oh, Riley. But only very slightly. In I, will, I will make a point. So Alex is the character who's the bully. Right. He yeah. is introduced as the bully. And the um, the like owner or the guy who's basically pushing this game off so strongly is the bully's father. Right? Yeah, but that doesn't really but, get into and the book. I know, I know, but on the on the idea of catharsis, the the chapters kind of um, give you a they in the book when you read it it italicizes like a pre set of events and it'll tell you mm-hmm. awoken online like four hundred days before release or something. Mm-hmm. There are characters in the beta trials who are like Aaron said, one's going through divorce beaters. <laughs> Beaters, <laughs> cheaters, but there are characters who are having real world issues, and the game is creating environments like to quests overcome that, no, those. I, one of my favorite aspects. things. No, no. To be fair, it gives them empower a choice. Them. Yeah, mm-hmm. It empowers them. The choices yeah. that they make in the game, because they do the, they several times. It comes back as a lab report from the beta. The head scientist is like, "Well, at first, this one test subject, you know, had this sort of like." real world issue and she's like overcome that issue after having played this game yeah. and they introduce a few elements which come into the next book and that's all I'll say the game is you want to go on the physical the no I wanted physical? to say one of my, I wanted to say about Alex is one of my favorite things about Alex in this book is is that there, you're right that we learned a little bit about whose father is towards the end of the book but the more important thing is is really we don't know Alex at all, really, in this book, we know our main character's yeah. perception of Alex yeah. and how his perception of this other human, who he doesn't know what he's going through, but knows how he's affected his life, yeah. and how that's how that's making him. Is he going to continue to go down the path of this makes me so angry? I want to destroy things, or is he going to do something different with his yeah. life in the- and change and not be? What we only know of him. So I think we've said a lot of praise about the books. Some of the things I, I, I don't like so much is it ties into exactly what you're talking about. Um, this really struck me at the beginning of the book. 
it's really the book is portrayed in black and white. Yeah. There's, oh, yes. There's, there's literally black and white. Right. So there's a scene where Jason mm-hmm. gets his face punched and beaten into yeah. the hospital, and not, he's not blamed hospital, for it. But, uh, I mean, but yeah. he gets sent home from school. He gets, he right. gets, because of Alex's power, his dad, and you want to, yeah, he, he gets away scot-free? Right. I'm so the, he, gets, kicked, he gets kicked out. I, I think it's, uh, I'm always talking about missed opportunities. It's another yeah. missed opportunity. Everything that happens to Jason in the book is not his fault. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. the bully punches him. Yeah. His parents, his parents are power or something. His parents kick him yeah. out. <laughs> his, his, his parents are not parents. And, and his like, only ah. flaw is that he takes it. And I get it. And that's not wrong per se, but it's a missed opportunity to me because being a person who's not perfect, surprise, Yeah. we're all flawed and it's sometimes our fault. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that was a missed opportunity to show other ways in which they Jason... use that opportunity to re- really, really hammer in the virtual real experience. He is a complete no one in the real world. They use that aspect of I can't overcome this myself, and they I, further to hammer be, in to why be fair, he enjoys the Awoken Online more. I, so I say that he was already changing before he started going into Ascension Online because I can directly point to you. When before, when he was going to get ex- suspended, and then he was like, "Well, fuck you," or he said, "The hell with you," or whatever, and then he, he said, walked you. out. Yeah, really yeah. So and then he walked out because like he was the the principal was giving yeah. him crap, whatever. Instead of saying, "Hey, principal," there's, there's a sense of false conflict because if he just would have said to the principal, uh, "Here's what's been happening. This is what Mrs. Abrams who." Who, yeah, you have a you have a, a principal, secretary. Yeah, principal you have a secretary. You have, a, you, have a, you have somebody on your. Well, even before that, you you have a, you have a you have a person on your staff that is antagonistic. That is that, is, that yeah. is, is looking at me. It's one of my main problems with the book is that like for some reason he's he's being pressured that he's like oh welfare, welfare case. case like maybe it's because like I'm different than Jason but it's just like yeah like. It wouldn't work today, much less like seventy years in the future. Yes. All of a sudden, Two, we're going to be is like based in two thousand seventy six. Then all of a sudden, I'm going to be like seventy four. Well, it starts. It starts in seventy four in the trials. I think Trial the actual starts the book is seventy six. I could argue that the character he did make make a change, but because I I've kind of been there when you hit rock bottom, because he hits rock bottom. Yeah, the only place to go is up, and yeah. that's when things do yeah, turn. Around. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying his his antagonist. Are so tailor made, tailor made antagonists. Yeah. They're like, over- like you got, you well, got some teacher that's just adults. Like, you got, yeah, you have this teacher have a, who's calling him welfare. You have these parents that are basically he's a non orphan orphan. Yeah, I, I, I think I think another slight problem with the book that I kind of you can kind of overlook is the fact that there's two protagonists in this in this book. Mm-hmm. There's Jason, who we follow the vast majority of the time, and yeah. in my opinion, the second protagonist yeah. is Alfred, mm-hmm. the actual oh, yes. CI well. controller, because he he has a large portion of the book. Like the part the parts well, I liked about the book is is like I the, agree, but only in retrospect. So I don't want to get too much into Alfred because I feel like Alfred is kind of more book two. Well, that's, oh yes, we, well, we, can, we can talk about this point, which I know Carrie has stuff to talk about in the vignette. So I guess we have divergent opinions. Maybe that's the difference between reading it and, and yeah. listening to it. I, I I really love these. So let me start off by saying that's a storytelling device that generally I love. I yeah. really love the the small stories support over characters. Story. Well, no, yeah, like a, like a support like a B story. That's I love sort of the support characters. The Grapes of Wrath kind of character. story where you're yeah. having the story that's these vignettes that are not necessarily connected yeah. but they're connected in this story I, I, some of them worked I really loved the ones that were told from Alfred's perspective yeah. like literally you're getting the computer readout I thought those were great yeah. the ones where they had like the web conferences between the two directors and whatnot. yeah that got tedious and Carrie said maybe they should have gone oh, I'm sorry but let me say yeah that. there's about every single time my biggest problem with them is they come a chapter too soon mm. yeah like there's this, one of my favorite one one of my least favorite ones that to me tell, explains that point is they're going into they're about to go into him learning this foreign language, and so Skill right book. before it, yeah. they tell they talk about how there's this new vignette, there's this new system that he does it, and he may be downloading stuff into people's mind. And then we have this character who's overreacting. If you have our first introduction to this idea of a skill book with his character touching this book, feeling like his brain's being scrambled, and then afterwards you can go into the idea that maybe this was made, the lab test that this events. is this, that this is something he added. To me, it just it it. A, it acts as a little bit of a spoiler because once I know that that's going to happen, once I know that this vignette here is going to tell me about a skill book and then I'm going to see a skill book, 
There's other times where I feel like it also talks about going to be spoilers. The spoilers, alignment spoilers. magic system, like they straight up like, here's the alignment system, yeah, here's yeah. the magic system, and here's gods, yeah. and then what happens next? Yeah. Alignment system, magic system, yeah, and yeah. then he needs I would have rather the showing, and then if you needed, if you felt like you wanted to do further explanation, which I like the further explanation that was provided, they just felt like they were always a chapter too soon. Yeah. Like they were I think always. I think leading the action as opposed to following the action. I, I agree with you actually 100% with what you're saying. I think it could have been done better if, if maybe it had been presented in a different manner. If, for example, instead of giving you a, I have found a way to ground all the, the knowledge into the players' brains or whatever, they kind of said, Alfred was doing a report and he's all like, I need to find a way to, you know... Yeah, access... I love the vignette with the uh, accessing... Uh, Short-term memory and long-term oh, yeah. memory. But he can't, doesn't, can't access short-term memory. Have to figure out. But how it to doesn't use. explicitly spell out for you. So if yeah. I want to research this further, and we know this is in the past. Yeah. I think you know a lot of show don't tell comes down to having trust in your audience. Yeah. Having trust that they can figure out, read between the lines, and figure things out without you spelling it out. Yeah. Them. And I think I hate to say this, this is a book that really struggles with this issue a lot. A lot sometimes it'll do a really great job a show. Yeah, and then it will turn around. The thing, like for example, what really struck out to me is like the very beginning of the book. He sits down with the teacher, and she's sneering at him or whatever, and you know, blah blah blah, like okay, your welfare or whatever. We get it. I get it right there. Yeah. Okay. And then Jason has this internal monologue, and he says, "She never liked me from the beginning." It's redundant. Yeah. And it's it, worse than being redundant. It, it doesn't even serve. It's like some of the when we get to the show, don't tell later in the book. Uh, when he's doing exposition, it's at least useful information to us because it comes up later in the these yeah. details come up later in the book. This she never shows appears again. That's like the only scene she's in. Yeah, so she gets smashed by a rock. Done. Right. So and that's not even her. But. It's it's uh, it's wasted time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I really, one of the things I really disliked about the book is how long you're like three chapters before you ever get into. It almost know. seems like it's two separate books. Also, well, it's a, it's a very good three act structure. It's one of the things I like the book. It has a very strong three act structure. The first act is him getting into the book, unlocking the powers. This is sort of unlocking the idea. Mm-hmm. Then yes. he sort of moves. Second. He like literally moves places. Yeah. And then he sort of takes over the town and and replaces it. And, and then, then there's, there's the this third war uh, act. So it has a very good three act structure in that way. There's sort of this um, definable. A three mi- acts. It's a very minor thing, and I didn't notice it until I read it. The idea of jumping around is an issue. My, one of my greatest issues in books is when you jump around too much. And you can't really blame a prologue for doing it. In the prologue, it takes place six days after the events, during the war, mm-hmm, yeah. during like the third act yes. of events. The first I am week. totally... When I went back and read it, I knew it was happening, but if I had not, it was like, yeah. what in the world is going on? Yeah. Then you immediately jump back into two, almost two years before anything. It's telling you some events. You know, There's mm-hmm. this new program, and then it jumps... It Trevor, co- I, have, pops. I, have, I have notes about that exact same thing. Yeah, only, I do not like jumping for that reason because I get lost. The only reason why I kind of give it a pass is I think it. it I think it's if I had to know from the if I had a glimpse into the author, I think it's his answer to Austin's problem that it feels like it takes three chapters to get into the game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's him thrown in that hook. It's thrown in. It's very much like that first scene in like Game of Thrones book. They're like this random deserter that's being oh, killed. Oh, yeah. They, they get, it doesn't really connect to any of the rest of the story. And it's just, it's sort of like this big sexy hook. I got you. And, I, I, and, and I am 100% book. agreement that you need to land a hook. And every single thing you write, movies, TVs, whatever, you need to land a hook in the first whatever couple minutes. So it's great about doing that. And then the hook me. Could you even wrong. You, you, Austin, Austin, so when we were at one, he actually put this book down because he couldn't right. get through the first three You're chapters. Right. I, I, he I initially... Put the book down for a couple months and then brought it back until until I listened to it and said no, continue it, up, continue it up. Right, yeah, that that is that is true. I, I he, literally put the book down after like chapter he, two. He mm. didn't get through like when he went, like when it was like going into second period. He was like, nope, nope, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, did not want to go through the whole kid's day. Granted, you don't, but you don't know that a real, when you're in a, it. A real sin of that prologue is the prologue. And the prologue itself is fine, but you're right, Trevor, on, on three points on all three points you made that. It's it's so far connected, you know. This this prologue here hap- doesn't the events we don't catch up to until the very end of the book. Yeah. But even then, it could have been okay, except you you finish that prologue, then you go into the vignette, and so it loses a real great 
could have been a theatrical that, beat. That was an awesome prologue. We have to all agree. No, no, no like, it was a prologue. Holy shit. Yeah. I was like, but here's the thing. Fuck yes. Like, the prologue ends with all, like, Tillman and Jason killed you, or something of that nature, yeah. where he reveals, like, he, and, he showed his transformed character. Where he like, like, nice just, like, and you have no idea who like, this guy is. Says, that's list. Jason. Uh, they're gonna get you, and he says, "I doubt it." And then, bam! He's right. dead. Yeah, it was fantastic. You know, I that loved it. That he's coming out. That I agree. Austin's gonna say. And then the next scene should have been instead of prologue. It should have been. Oh no! I'm late for school. Mom, <laughs> mom turned off the internet again. <laughs> right. yeah, it's just it's just saved by the bell turn. turn. And, and you miss that beat because the yeah. prologue disrupts it, and that was that was a shame. I love I love that though. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I, I'm, I I jump off a whole bunch of stuff. But you give me a hook like that, I was in it because I was like, "Oh, this is a I was dark, in it. dark motherfucker." Yes, yes. But yeah, then it completely it splits. And I'm not. I think this book did it the best as far as skips go because a lot of the skips, they could have handled it better. But a lot of the skips give us a lot of spoilers as to what's going to be happening yeah, in the book to come. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, that's another point. So it's just, I think the book accomplished for for my reading pleasure. I think the book did fine in the way they handle it. But it could have been something more. It's like, just, it was good, but it, it maybe it could have been done somewhere different. Like a chapter later. It makes okay. sense, actually. Uh, so, so we're, everything one we're, starting to, we're starting to go around in circles. Yeah. So, so let's move on to another point that I have. So. That I, that time compression. Do you like that mechanic? I'm fine with the mechanic. I, it's, you know, the book, te- the, my thing with this book is it kind of teases on a lot of issues. And I don't know if the authors think, I think he must be thinking about them. So I've read a lot of literature about what people are thinking about AIs. Yeah. You know, in terms of how they're going to think differently than us, and how they might act differently than us, and what all these things might mean to us. Yeah, and perception of time and, is a big one. And the book is t- is toying in with that, and I think uh, even with the super Alfred super intelligent. Yeah. Um, it, it works every NPC at the exact same time. Exactly. And... Um, but it also it kind of kind of teases you, but so far, and even in the second book, it really hasn't gone anywhere with that so I'm yeah. saying it's always on the it's always on the cusp of saying something about AI this is maybe this is what annoys me about those developer vignettes they're always talking about oh, can we trust Alfred what if he goes out of control yada yada yeah. but nothing ever actually happens that gun is just they keep pointing at the gun that's sitting on the wall yeah but it's just it continues to stay on the wall mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. even towards the end of book one where finally I felt like the message finally was stated Alfred, the AI, the, the lab techs start calling the AI Alfred. That's, yeah, yeah, that's like that's what we're referencing two. to. That's what we're referencing to. At the end of book one, Alfred directly confronts Jason's like, hey, he basically hits a wall as an AI of learning how to he needs an be, be a better AI. Yeah. And he confronts and Jason and says, I need to, I, I've reached the limit of my capacity as an AI to evolve, and I want you to. Let me. Yeah, that, yeah but that really goes into too. book two. But I, I, I know, but that's two. still the, in the book one. It's still book one. But that's yeah, the, that's the cliffhanger. Book one. What we had said before, what like for example, what a cool thing and super intelligent beyond running this game AI could do. Yeah, he's crafted this custom story for Jason. We got to imagine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The score doesn't explicitly state it. I but wish yeah. it would. This well, they do state it because they have custom quests. So the, the idea of a custom but, story is. But a thing. I'm but, saying, like, maybe they could have had a readout, like from from Jace, from the Alfred, where he's talking about specifically the uh, custom yeah. quest. That because we don't, we, we're left wondering: is the fact that Jason's gone on this crazy storyline is that on purpose? Why is he or chosen? Is, why is he? Cho- why is he chosen? This character versus the other thousands that are joining. Uh, so the point is, is the the what can really hit on that, in my opinion, is when the Death God first gives him the magic and gives him that vision of the army of the undead and the Draco Lich landing on the side of the building, and then no, he sees that vision, vision, that that tempting vision. Is that a tempting vision, or is that the future that the computer AI is like? Ah, right, here's what I'm going to give you. Yeah, I think I think it leaves a little bit too. Much. Usually, you need to leave some mystery in your story. Yeah. But I think in this case it's leading a little bit too much on because Jason thinks that this is this is just random. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We as the audience have a little bit more insight into it, and so we're wondering, is is the computer actually plotting this for him, or is it just, you know, whatever's happened? Like is he mm-hmm. gonna be the keystone for his plan is I know how to make every human better? Is I'm going to make you the focal point of well, all the so you, you mentioned before, is it is it's another missed opportunity. Are other players having similar experiences? Yeah. Now, in the second yeah. book, they touch on this a little bit, but in the first book, it's only Jason. Jason's the only. 
Yeah, if the, if in, we in the book, the adventure like that, we don't get any. In, at, in the second act, as Jason mm-hmm. is beginning to snowball his power, uh, they really do key in the point of like the idea I brought up earlier. You can do what you want, but there will be consequences. Players are not supposed to be able to kill town guards. They are buffed and way higher level. That's a game mm-hmm. mechanic. They should not be killable. Jason, as a necromancer, basically or makes, just just the fact that he has infamy led him down a question. Let him down a path let of him him he, a the, the game he he basically figures out a way to take out higher level guards and he like power levels and it snowballs into this cataclysmic event that turns a bustling mm-hmm. corrupt town into a shadow realm. Does, Un- everyone becomes undead. It's a problem that's not really addressed until the second book, but it's somewhat addressed here. In some people like the fire mage in their early yeah. fight, is that it is one of the problems with the book though as well is that what's it like? Sometimes it's like a level one can kill a ninety seven by just stabbing him in the neck, yeah. and at other times it's like, well, this guy who's one hundred and twenty is you know is all of a sudden bad news, and this guy that's it's like it's a weird mix of like yeah, what a few extra levels. Oh, this guy's one hundred and forty. That means he's extra bad news. It's like then why well, was like, that ninety seven nothing? Yeah. I mean, I get you. Wanting, you literally stabbed him in the neck. I got it. He was yeah. asleep. You're wanting you to overkilled him by 23 points. Yeah, but it's it's hard to it's hard to, it's hard to understand the power scale because now you're granted you're min maxing. You're level 50, and you're about to control this army mm-hmm. versus you know these yeah. other characters that the you've climactic, already killed that are higher level than you. It's like the climactic finish was Jason was not Alex was in the hundreds, wasn't he? He was a very high level paladin. Yeah, he was like 150. Yeah, 100, in, uh, he was a ridiculous high level paladin. And Jason is not even half his During level. The video, he, may be, he may be at 80 by the end of that point. It's not clear because I don't remember exactly. Yeah, the level numbers. system is is jacked in this. Well, game. I guess my, I didn't have if a problem. It leads to numbers. It leads to my favorite part of the book, which is they could have added more of it if they wanted to because it was that popcorn. It was that that the kind of the one of the trademarks of lit RPGs. And sort of the crack of this book, especially in the bing. auditory, is the bing, 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 bing. I, oh, the I love that. that. I love that in the book. Uh, and that's why I didn't know whether if the book it came across as much because in the um, in the in, when I'm listening to an audible, oftentimes I would listen to those, I, you know, because you can do the thirty I mean, second the book, backs. It's going so fast in the book that it's really it's hard. Just a, to, I think it's just, it was just a ding ding. Is like, do they, do they have a little call out box or? How yes, they, yeah. they still have a special text. Now, I read the Kindle version. I don't know what a hard copy book I have, but yeah. I don't think he has a hard copy. Sometimes, it's actually very annoying. This yes. is an issue I more, guess. like, technology-wise. Some books I've read lit RPG, I have to completely rescale... To see the, the to stat see box? The, the stat I, I, box. I, I, I don't, the, most of the time in lit RPGs, in my opinion, they will tell you the stats that, that are pertinent to the story, mm-hmm. and then they'll give you the stat box, but the stat box has no use... And so you just slip right by. Cause but like, it's, it's extra. It's like extra yeah. stuff and it's, it's a nice it's flavor. Touch. It's flavor. I get it. I, I love it because it's yeah. almost as if mm-hmm. I'm in the game. But it, it has nothing to do with the story, me knowing what a strength the, is. So um, why I, get I don't know how, how much the audio, but like the ding ding aspect was. Um, it really, in, the, in reading the book, it really hammered in how overwhelming you could be when it's open world. When he started killing all the guards, it's just like. Just slammed like Dude, boom, twenty levels. Level up. Well, yeah. you know, it's like 20, love, 30 levels in one go. Like, holy crap! In the in the audible version, I, as I was saying, they have that thirty second back button. So almost every time there was a level up, I would listen to it at least twice, if not three <laughs> times, of these ding 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 ding, and listening you know, to what the changes are. I but it gave me that. the thing was to me was is one of the things I especially like. I would have a problem like especially by the time I got to the part where like I'm working on a spell and I like and like all of a sudden. I can learn that I can carve the bones differently, uh-huh. and like I'm learning, like, and I've already got the idea that I picked up profession, and I've picked up tactician. Mm-hmm. Like, I think I would all of a sudden sit down in the middle of town somewhere and become Naruto with Kagabushin, and just sit there and try my spell eight thousand different ways until I've learned. Yeah. Until Once I made the computer come out with spell out. Yeah. every different way I can think of to summon a spell, every different way I think I can make a custom we, skeleton, we every that. different that that I would almost have the paralysis of a character where I'd be like. Well, if I can do anything, what if I work on this? Well, what I think I work on that? that speaks to the book's success because yes. we talked about before one of the um, aspects of a lit RPG is self-insertion, and that's definitely what you're talking about there. Yeah. I think the deal is, you know, sometimes we play a lot of video games, and sometimes yeah. people refer to RPG games like 14, which we play, Final Fantasy 14, 
are bar filling up simulators. And then you yeah. just play the game and you just like to see the bars yeah. fill up. They're fancy clickers. And we so sometimes people look down on clickers, but if you like RPGs, you're kind of playing like a very, very um, fancy clicker. And, and you know, it's kind of like a Pav- Pavlovian simulate uh, stimulation there. Yeah. You know, in the dark. And so the book just kind of captures the essence of that. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. level up. Like you've already level up. you're already you have to, 13 to undistributed like scout points. Do you have 41 I, I love that. points? I love that. I love that. It's, 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 it brought me joy. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. brought me joy. We got yeah. level five. This is 16. percent It's that. Is that little? Those little. Oh, I love yeah, that. That's a game where that is more, a beautiful. You could have touch. had more. And as I said, especially like the stuff that I would have liked a little bit more of is less than more of those, but more stuff like, oh, you did this. It picks up this other passive skill. This yeah. other. Sort of little things you can be doing to picking up more. I can kind of agree. I'm, skills. I'm so unprepared to say. That. Uh, one of the other lit RPGs I'm reading has something very similar. The more you use a skill differently, they keep throwing more aspects of a different variety. And it, if you do it too much, it's an overwhelming flood. And it's just it's too much. It's like I, I, I can. Yeah. I think I think I think he did. I think he definitely wanted. I mean, everything about this. It, it kind of makes sense because this character is not me in so many ways. It's one of the things I like the book because I can I can want to be in the world even though I don't necessarily feel like Jason because I don't necessarily feel like the world's acting against me at this point in my life as much as it may have if I was younger or more of Jason's to But instead, I do want to be in the world. But at least it does. I do understand that like this character Jason is very as much as he's a schemer and a plotter, he's a single-minded character, very narrow focus, very he wants to min max, but he's also sort of. You know, it's like you can't, like you literally can't handle two things at once because you like oftentimes they're like, "Well, I have to investigate that later." Whereas, like you know, in today's society, maybe it should be different uh, headset, but in today's society, oh, I have a random thought, I want to look up that, pull up a I, secondary device, pull up a secondary computer window, and let research let that. Let I, that out, I feel like homework. that yeah. specific topic ha- happens and is addressed more in the second book, which is yeah. a different topic. Well, he does a good job of portraying Jason as a gamer. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so yes. Relatable to yeah. other gamers. Yeah, yeah. If, and they if, if you're not Jason as him, you can understand yeah. his yeah. strategy. And I Jason is a heavy Jason gamer. They, explain, they say that very early. Jason right. loves video games because it's his escape from reality. All right. Uh, uh, what did you think about the psychological torture gear in the warfare part? That was that is a topic that does not come up, and I enjoyed it because it showed Jason. Becoming more of the character that we talked about is the AI cultivating him into this kind of character, mm-hmm. and he plays oh, so off. We're talking about when you're, it's teasing these issues. Yeah, that never really mm-hmm. yeah. is it? Yeah. He would have something. Would yeah. he would ever done that in high? school? Like, would he have ever tried to play the psychological warfare if, if, it, if it was the, in is high school? The black mag- he- is the dark magic? Is that controlling him, or is he controlling it? Yeah, especially because like I kind of see the problem with it. Like, if I'm this character. Who the whole world is acting against me, and I want this control. But when I get, because even after he has this revelation, when the city's rebuilt, and he has this idea that you can rebuild, you don't have to destroy. Yeah. And then I get that you feel like your city's about to be attacked. But then your response to it is still a response to it as if you're the bully. He yeah. starts then bullying these other NPCs well, because we don't get to know these other characters. But most of these people following Alexion down to the place, they're or, not. Yeah. We don't I, know that they're all jerks. I just they're just like, and they're not. They're just following what they but think is saying, right. But I'm just saying, but he's torturing these people. Yeah. Right. He becomes the bully. I just like that section. Uh, I, 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 I liked what the ideas that it was to- toying with. I dislike that, A, it never, it never shits a bit off the pot on it. Yeah. I dislike the section because it strongly portrays the other players in the game as, as useless, as, as useless as NPCs essentially. Yes, yeah, mm-hmm. as they can do nothing yeah. against him. Because it's like they've never played a video game before, yeah. or, or, yeah. or or just like me and Alex well, are fair, smart. Everybody else just follows us. It's to, like to be why fair, is no one else doing something. To be fair, they kind of try to work that as is. There's never been a game where you literally had to walk to the other yeah. city to fight. There's no. So, like, they're playing it as if it's WoW or something like that. Where well, you could just be like, I'm that, gonna fly there is, there is that a idea I comes know, from. Uh, league, but there is a figure. I know. They like, address that like, issue in the anime Log Horizon, actually, because you have to also travel. You have to stop, rest, travel, stop, rest. If you die, you go way. But, but yeah, back. I, I agree. It's like, why are all these characters, especially in Alexian's army, just sort of like. Stupid. Chilling yeah. with him. I agree. No it's one, like, no one. Like, it's like, if Alex, like, it's like they have the idea of, like, well, Alexion didn't set up a better defense. It's like, then why you're traveling with the army. Yeah. Like, why is he the only one who can talk to the Why NPCs? is Alexion the if it's only not, guy in charge? Yeah, and like if, if it's literally not, 
grand vizier general. And if it's not that, then why is my character the only character that needs to go through catharsis? Yeah. Why are these other characters that you're also wanting to like? How like I get how why Jason's playing more time. Like uh, Jason, yeah. If I'm Jason, I'm playing this game more. If I just spent two days of my life walking through the forest to get blown up by skeleton dug into the path, yeah. I'm not going to go, well, that was interesting game mechanics. I'm going to go home. Back in again. Yeah, I'm going to oh, go, yeah. well, that was some BS. What do you mean some things just blew up on the ground? And you know, that's out. BS, you know. Even if it's yeah. like, oh, that character's got an interesting class skill, you just aren't a necromancer. It's like, yeah, hey, game, why can't I be a necromancer? Hey, game, why don't I have access to powers that and allow me to that, come up with that? Like, oh, point, broken, Austin, we gotta... Austin made, like, he, he really does torture them. Like, when the players... Are like when when so they blow up or they lose a fight torch. and yeah, they like they're and the from players, the west he, kill, he keeps yeah but there are the players who wait to log in it's like well I don't want to log in I don't want to fight that war they still get killed because Jason commands zombies like wait here for them to respawn way after the army's left it's like I agree I didn't enjoy that part as much I enjoyed the grand scene yeah. the grand fight and. The grand fight was awesome. Him making the, the oh. bone golems. Oh, that was, was so awesome. good. Yeah. I like parts of it, but like just the psychological torture, the constant psychological torture. I think after How like day two, he? day two, people were like, hey, let's keep watch. Hey, yeah. let's set up a trap for this guy. Not, hey, let's just keep marching and hope yeah. nothing happens to us. Yeah, it's been, especially, again, yeah, they're not, they're not doing anything. There's to no themselves. rangers to walk around in the woods. Yeah, there's, there's no, no, there's no there's rogues no, finding trap. Your yeah. carry brings up no the exact healers, point I thought. It's like these every single player that wasn't Jason or Alex, Alex or Alex Alexion or Riley or have never played an RPG before. And they never played D and D before. Yeah, there's nothing I mean, going on. There's no, there's no, no, <laughs> there's no griefers. I, I think a lot more people would have joined I'm, at, uh, Jason's side. Yeah, first yeah. Anyway. yeah. They would have been like, Are you I would have, I would have been gladly. Let's be undead. Let's fuck up this other guy. Or yeah. there's, or there's that not. That dude looks like a douche. Let's or fuck there's him not up. like undead that are sabotaging the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had that one guy that's a scout. Like one guy. No, there have been griefers all over the damn place. Um, I think. Uh, I forgot my point. <coughs> Sorry. No, I, I, I just, I'm willing to give it credit in my head because yeah. in my head I'm thinking, well, maybe the, it, the book hasn't explicitly told us it, but it is a super genius AI, so maybe in its smarterness than me is crafting a story that appeals to these other players. Yeah. I don't know how walking for two days and getting blown up by a zombie is a story that appeals to that character and that's the story that they need, yeah. but maybe it's happening. I don't know. That's the internal credit. I, that's, the, that's the switch I flipped in my head. So the I same can ignore the not, move on. I want to agree. Like they've gotten a quest, help join the army. You're getting paid for it. Maybe or there's got to be. There, there's yeah, you know. know for a fact. Maybe, there's a player incentive the, to do uh, it. The other idea I put in my bottom of my head to, to kind of give it a pass was maybe Jason's issue was more critical. Maybe Jason was logging in and like he's homeless and yeah. you know he's got all these things going on in his life. Mm-hmm. He needs attention now. Same thing yeah. for uh, Alex. Really. Oh, like, yeah. The, um, the other, and so that's why his story happens first, and maybe the, the other players' characters are just happen later. But again. These are these are ideas I came up with in my head. Mm-hmm. This, that they really should have been in the paper. Yeah, and and there's again it goes back to sort of this problem, sort of problems of the antagonists is, is it has this idea that like I'm the poor kid, I'm welfare, but it's like your parents are both lawyers, lawyers that are being flown around They're the world. Eco lawyers. Currently, like an eco lawyer makes over a hundred thousand dollars, so both your parents are making like around a hundred thousand dollars. If today's term, was, we, we don't know. Maybe the future all of a sudden lawyers aren't worth money. I don't see that change happening anytime soon. I was very confused as to why he was looked at as so. Big. I could see, I could see why you might on the be, lower end of being. I rich. could see why you could be sure. like, you could be. Yeah, I'm not as rich as the other people. I don't see like, oh, I'm on scholarship and I'm and I'm the poor kid, especially because it's like at the end of the day, like you're on just, scholarship. You're totally just totally scholarship because you're dumb. Yeah, it's the only part that I didn't fully get was like, is like there's just to me the part that was completely un, unrelatable was this idea that. That I'm gonna be made fun of by teachers and people at school because I'm well, welfare. I, to be to be fair, I went to a my very, parents are lawyers. I went to a, if I tell my parents I'm getting made fun of because I'm welfare, my parents are lawyers. The school's <laughs> gonna be in trouble. So I went to school at PG, and then in, in our town, PG like is kind of like the more white flight. I had a very I had a very like or Texas High had a lot of rich people, but Texas High or Pleasant Grove. Had a lot of rich kids in the same area. Like they were all college. the school, all and they the people were very... on the city council, most of their kids went to PG, and I went there. And we've had exchange students, poor kids. Like we had a little kid of uh, like one of his 
fathers was in jail for drug dealing. He was in our school district, and he was one of the most popular kids in the school. So, like, I went to a yeah. school where the the strata of rich and poor are very wide and diverse, and then we're it still all still comes down to the yeah. character. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. There's gonna be other factors. It's not necessarily because I mean, it's just so far as like, I, I, yeah, but you've been smooching your school with your poor. I mean, it's just was like. I Everything was too other. And I, I think that's probably why Austin was like, his parents. Well, actually, I, 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 it's not exactly why I turned yeah. it off. Um, I was willing to accept the characterization. I agree with you that it's ham handed. Uh, yeah. To me, the, the way he was treated in school came off more believable. If kids decide they want to dislike yeah. him, oh, the yeah. fact yeah. that he was, that he oh, was uh, yeah. welfare was just the reason that they, yeah. they picked on him. Uh, yeah. It could have been anything else. You yeah, know, he, he had walked with a limp, he would have been limpy or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's my thing. So that didn't bother me so much. The the thing with the parents uh, bugged me a little bit more, you know. But you know, to give the story credit, you know, Tolstoy said every happy family is the same. Um, every unhappy family is uh, unhappy in a unique way. So perhaps, even though I agree with you that it doesn't sound plausible that the the, the parents are lawyers, like if you wake enough to to be flown, if if your labor is valuable enough to be flown someplace to yeah. work. As in, they can't find someone cheaper to do it there already. Then your labor is enough to get paid a lot. But yeah, maybe I just don't have the. Since my parents were very attentive growing up, I don't have the empathy with an inattentive uh, upbringing that he's trying to portray here. Yeah. Anyways, I've learned on a lot. What I'm really trying to say is, it's very a stock. It's very stereotypical. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. for me, I got it. Like in the first couple pages, okay, I get I get Jason's story. He's mm-hmm. the neglected kid who's bullied to school. Easy. I told you in two sentences what, what Jason is. It went on for three chapters. It mm-hmm. kind of belabored the point. So yeah. I was like, I'm like well, the very the very when he went into the class the first time and he got you know and had the encounter with, with uh, Alex the first time. That was it. I, I I knew the story at that point. Yeah. I didn't need any more. It went on for a whole another chapter of the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the same kind of tangent, what did you think about the sexual harassment of Riley? That brought in a very dark aspect that I feel cemented Alex as not being he's not going to be in re- in, redeemed the, redeemed yeah. the whole aspect of the AI was that they it tried to make people it, the quests and everything customized made people better it, it it strengthened them as a person and the idea behind Alex being put into the game because he was actually part of the beta they said yeah. that his father knew his son was bad he knew about he covered up his actions yeah. he there, in, that, in that very aspect, the father like like hacked the, the guy's phone and got rid of that blackmailing thing. He's like, I, "This is ridiculous. I have to do this again." Like the father specifically goes, "I had to delete every in a, like a monologue. I had to delete these like insane like blackmailing pictures because well, it would have would have ruined his son." Yeah. And it further cements that Alex is bad. Okay, let's regardless go. of like in the game. Yeah, let's go into... This is sort of getting into the very end of the book, so it's getting into the, the very spoilers of the book. Uh, so, uh, again... We'll I think we've been talking about spoilers the whole time. So okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then I will say the big thing to me about that the final section of the book is why I like it and I don't like it because, again, it's it's, it's to me, it's, it's a little too much contrasted. It's a little bit too much black and white. Is that it? it de- it's definitely trying to tell you the idea that this whole time Alex has been going on assumptions of who... I mean... Uh, Jason has been going on assumptions of who Alex is. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the book, we learn no, that Alex exactly. is a very... Tru- while he's bad, he's a very troubled, yeah. troubled kid. He's just... Yeah. I mean, because like, if, I'm, it, if but, I'm Alex's dad, I stop buying him pets after yeah. I come home to the first vivisected pet. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, much I'm, less, like, he says, like, he keeps coming home to his first I, I was hoping for what you were kind of teasing at there, that we would learn that Alex is not as bad as we think he is. Or he has his reasons for being disturbed. And he kind of does, does. But also, I think the book just goes too far. There's a, there's a line. Mm-hmm. It I, have, I kind of have a lot of empathy for everybody. And I'm not saying yeah. I don't have any empathy for Alex. But, but yeah, he's a, they kind of sweep the line. that off well, it's so not, fast. It's so not that I have no empathy for him. He crosses the line where, like, okay, I can believe that you can be in a computer game for treatment to the line of, I think you need to be in a medical hospital for treatment over there. Yeah. It kind of mm-hmm. it goes a little bit too yeah. far. You're killing pets. You're sexually harassing your fellow classmates. You're like, assaulting. Is that book you're two? physically he assaulting people. beats two kids to the point where they're unrecognizable yeah. in the uh, face. Yeah. That's in the first book, I think. Was yeah, it? yeah. Okay. That's the first book, yeah. He. Oh, it's yeah. just. Yeah. I, I feel like it was hammered, but I have no sympathy for the character. 
and the thing is, <coughs> I didn't like the fact that, that yeah, especially he, like, we already get that he's a bad guy. We could have done like uh, he had uh, she she got caught cheating because she was helping her friend cheat or something like that. Yeah, that could have been the blackmail he had over yeah, her, not sexual harassment. They got they were at a party. She thought he was a good guy. They went to a bedroom and he took pictures of her. Yeah, that, that, that's that's a touchy. Not, that is a very yeah, touchy that, subject. That, that is a bridge yeah. too far. Travis is too far removed from high school. Not that we're any closer. I don't know how Travis is. Yeah, but he really felt like he had to belabor. But you know, what, like I talked about before. It's a thing he kind of does. Is he he does the show and he tells you again anyways. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah. especially it's like it's like it, it's again it's like yeah you you think your child needs help but it's like I know you see like a, a married lady getting back with her husband but it's not like you have like oh my son's showing uh, trademark signs of a serial killer. Yeah. Huh. Well, that's yeah. Really, and this is changing it. Is. Especially like if you look at the game, it's like oh he's continuing to be a serial killer. Not obviously disappointing, but it, an aspect of the book is that really this is the Jason story. Yeah, there really aren't any other characters. If there. they would have dropped a lot of the Alfred stuff, they could have done a tale of two two men from two cities. Like oh, that a, a, a tale, tale of, two of Jason, oh, tale of tale Alex. of Alex, and a tale of Jason. Well, that's kind of what they do in the sequel. So it's kind yeah, of, but like know, in a way, it's like Travis is traveled back in time. Heard Travis? all the complaints. Oh, yeah. the, the yeah. author heard all the complaints we said, and then in the sequel, he probably looked up Reddit and he was like, "Shit, they are right." There's a lot. Do you like to fix this book? Next book's better. <laughs> the wow. differences in book one, book two, yeah. which we'll probably talk about book two at some point. The differences from well. one to two, I have a lot to say about, but that's another yeah. time. So, how would you rate this book <laughs> overall? Would you recommend it? Would you recommend it with caveats? I would would you recommend it? I would recommend it with reservations. If you are the person that is... If you like lit RPG books, that, then that go the, ahead. The idea yeah. of this RPG, RPGs. you play RPGs, it sounds interesting to you, I would definitely yeah. recommend it. I would say... If you are if you be like me, or power through the first couple chapters, once it actually gets into the VR game, the story really picks up. And yeah. while I say it's pop lit, I agree with Austin. It's not pop lit, like we listen to some of it with our mom... But I don't think at the end of the day, since her mom's not a gamer, I don't think it's at the end of the day a book that she's going to finish. No. Because this doesn't have that tie. You, you kind of need... I would recommend it for general audiences. Yeah, yeah. you kind of need at least if, a foot in the door. If you need, if you like lit RPGs, read this book. If you don't like lit RPGs, or you've not read lit RPGs, I can give you lit RPG. I can give you recommendations for lit RPGs that are much better than this. Really? I, so? I thought I, this was a good This, this is top tier, but like I've read... The, the, another I, one of the books I've read that I, I could have been the author. I've liked so much better. I might pick something easier going than this book. This may like, have been like my favorite. Uh, this Ready Player One, Sword Art Online. This, 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 this may have been the favorite book I, I read last year. One. SAO oh. is not yeah. what I would say. I don't know. I like Ready Player One. As far as the book goes, well, if you're a gamer, if you're a gamer and you have a slight interest in reading, you have to actually like reading books. Or listening to books. Audible these days is like totally the way Right, right. If you have an interest in these stories where you're not playing the character, if you are a gamer, I would recommend these this genre books. I would recommend this book as a spearhead into the genre. I actually would. Okay. I did not have the same problem burning through those first few chapters uh, I mean, I, 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 the I first got time I went through this fine. was is, is audiobook, mm-hmm. and so like I, I have like an eight hour work day where I'm constantly listening to audiobooks. So I was like, "Well, I bought this book. I got eight hours. Let me see how far I can get through this book." But this book, I think, I really shows, <laughs> and then I just powered through it. I, I like Awoken Online, uh, Book One Catharsis, because I feel like it really does give the lit RPG genre justice. It gives you the character. The problem is, as we said, it hammers in that black and white too hard. Mm-hmm. But Literally. every book has a flaw in some way. And Carrie, what do you think? I, I agree. It was probably it was at least in my top five books that I read last year. I think we all read this book initially last year. Yeah. Um, I think it probably was in my top five. But you really liked for it. books, that, so I really did enjoy it. I did have problems with it, but that, that's part of that's part of I think all of one of the four things that our group enjoys is it, when you sometimes even more. When you enjoy something, you, you want to really dig into yeah, that's that's the true. meat of it. Like it, it, it impassions me. If I like this book less, yeah. I would not have talked about it as yeah, much. Yeah, it impassions me to want to discuss some of the stuff that bugabooed me, that 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 gnawed at me. Like you know, the parts that I did not relate to as much. Yeah, because piece, I enjoy, as I said, in a pile of shit, doesn't bother you. A piece of shit in your cake. <laughs> <laughs> as I said, was crack. I mean, you could have, you could have, could have. 
I mean, if you're having too much I'm, more... I'm, I'm, listening, I'm thinking, picturing, picturing Carrie right now on his cell phone doing the... <laughs> Look, because you're 30 seconds back, normally it's like one or two 30 seconds back, and you're back to... Ding, 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 to hammer Carrie's point level about 12. the level up sound effect, yeah. the Final Fantasy XIV level up sound effect was a, was a notification sound on my phone for a long time, and it was... It was like, bam! Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. slightly, slightly different aspect of the same question, since you, you brought it up. Compared to other books in the lit RPG genre, how would you rate it? So, uh, Aaron, you already said... I, I, the, the, the Shaman's Path, I, I really, really, really enjoy. Until, like, the last last book was kind of... Oh, you've read a bunch of them, then, I guess. Yeah, there's, like, there's six, six books in a series oh. that are translated so far, and his... Fifth book starts to have like a downward trend because like he, the story he wanted to tell was really in the first four. Well, or four but how books. would you rate this other one to like other books people might have heard of in the genre? Oh, like or Ready other- Player One and um, Little Gamer. Yeah, the gamers. Uh, Criticals was it Critical Failure or something like that? That's another super- NPCs. NPCs. It's it's in it's in the top echelon. Like if you, you had a list of like here's an award for a lit RPG. You wouldn't give it to it. I I wouldn't. But I can I can see somebody saying yes. That's, that's I really enjoy necromancers. I enjoy necromancers as you a do, class. You do, and so mm-hmm. I enjoyed that part. I enjoyed a lot of parts about this. It's just I overall as a lit RPG, like it's really really good. It's just I I've seen stuff that's more my okay. taste. What about you, Trevor? Um, I I've, I've I've basically just in this past six months gotten into the RPG and I've hammered in. I'm, I've started reading. But you've read, you've seen I've, Sword of Online. And yeah, I've seen Sword of Online. Um, I've been reading. Uh, I, have to, I, have, I don't have. I have the worst member. I've been re- I've read Reading Gate Online, Bahal Online, Eden's Gate, The Land. <coughs> um, I feel like I'm the Shield uh, Hero. Awoken Online and um, The Land is probably the. I think, in my opinion, if I had to give like a book. The series of pace to my liking. The Land is currently my favorite lit RPG series. Right, but what about this one? This one, I still feel, is what I would say, this is what you should read first to see if you like the genre. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, this, yeah you could call this it's, a litmus. It's great yeah. lit. It's great, as I said, it's a great sort of popcorn. It's just like good. It feels good. feels entertaining. has that kind of Marvel movie Am feel. Am I just being contrary because y'all are saying it's... No, 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 no it should be. No, it just has that Marvel that's, movie that's, feel. It has that's, it that's, should uh, be. Has kind of has I think that, it's like, because if I had a point, if I had a point, so why I have the reason I wouldn't do it, it literally have to be Riley. The fact that the way they that treat really Riley, bugs yeah, that that bugs me. Every that. single pit, part of fiction, but or that's anything your character. Like that, I mean, you just, have a real strong issue about that. That that that, that topic yeah. is a very touchy thing. The only thing worse it could have been Little Demon Girls. <laughs> little ghost girls. <laughs> Those yeah, were awesome. They're little ghosts, like the little children <laughs> yeah. things. I was like, I was like, no. Yeah, why that was you make so awesome. That was children of the night. That was another thing. Like, <laughs> that was another thing I was wondering about <laughs> so that book. It was good. like, if their character is supposed to look like you, like, is there an age gate on this game? <laughs> because I was imagining like all of a sudden being like a ten year old. Logging into this game, landing in Lux, and all of a sudden this zombie horde coming at you <laughs> and <laughs> literally they, they eating you there alive. Was a, there's a gore filter. If you're under 18, there's a gore filter. Yeah, so there was. Thinking, like there. unicorns are coming, come <laughs> destroy you. Yeah, I don't know what. You it, got a rainbow yeah, through your yeah, chest. Yeah, I totally forget. Did pulse. this game he does have a pain filter, was. or they just didn't have pain? No, no they, they, could not. There was a you could dull it, but you could never remove the pain. I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember if that was a part of it. Well, I guess for me, two things. This is a humbling experience because I'm not used to other people being like super more familiar with like any genre of fiction <laughs> than me. <laughs> Even the most. So that's that's a little humbling for me. So this beside this is really the only pop lit on the pop lit lit RPG I have read as in a book. I've read a, I've touched a couple fan fiction. Yeah. This is really the only book. And so it's hard for me to judge. The, like I say, if you consider Ready Player One, which I didn't think it was a, a lit RPG, I really didn't like Ready Player One, so I would rate this higher than that. Um, I, think, I think it's, it's one of the first it, ones I've read. To me, it smashes the other stuff different. that's in the genre and that genre adjacent, too. Like, it it's better than Red Shirts, in my opinion, which is genre well, adjacent. Yeah, it's genre adjacent. It's, not uh, it's better than, to me, it's, it's, com- it's previous competitors, stuff like a Pathfinder RPG book. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. is, again, uh, adjacent. adjacent. But, but, but I mean, it's... it's it's the same category. I wouldn't tell somebody who doesn't like a Pathfinder to read a Pathfinder book, you know, in general. So unless I, said, I really can't compare it to any other um, books I've read in the genre. I wouldn't recommend it as an intro. I would recommend something a little bit more accessible because I think this is a this is a touch hard to get into. I would recommend 
I, I kind of hate to say it, Sword Art Online, or actually, what's that one we read? Grimgar, or we watched Grimgar. Grimgar, Grimgar I really liked Grimgar. Pretty good. Grimgar was a pretty good story. It had had some dark tones, but it was good. Uh, Sword Hero um, is is um, I. I'm, I See, but, but yeah, it's I like, a little slow. I like, I like there the there is a video do. on YouTube, and I'll send it to you. Maybe we can on this very at the very end of the topic. This video um, talked about Grimgar and Sao and Log Horizon. How certain novels, certain animes have what is called a weight to the actions in in the events. In Grimgar, there's a weight. Like the very the very first Goblin kill yeah, is a struggle. The Goblin doesn't want to die. They grow this. This video is so awesome. I really, I think. There, it's it's not just about Grimgar, but it's about a weight of actions and mm-hmm. uh, anime and stuff. I wonder if we could like maybe put a link we as a recommendation. It. it talks about how the weight of actions characters have in a show or a mm-hmm. novel. But do you felt this this book had a lot of act, weight to its action? Because I, I really feel like it did. That was pretty yeah, neat. Especially because yeah. he was almost the character. Our character was literally removed from most right. of the deaths after after Act Two. It's a yeah. different or, kind of after weight. Act One. It it takes uh, because in in shows like Grimgar and SAO death is very permanent you characterize a character and this one you respawn so the weight is different yeah but the action is to me pushes forth this idea and the idea is that there's a lot of numbers I mean Jason's actually a character min maxes he at by the end of the book he's like level 80 he had like what 600 stat points and they they all went the wisdom. Yeah. His, his wisdom was literally a summoner stat, and he went like hardcore into it. But the stats didn't make didn't matter because he was level twenty well, when is, he was killed level one hundred. But this sounds like the, there's no way to it. Yeah, yeah I know, I know. I know. But there is some to a point, but it's like the opposite end of the way of to it. And in the genre of like, do you what do your actions do? Do your actions have effects? Yeah. yeah. And I guess that's my only other problem with the book. Is that, I, get, I get what you're saying. It took a lot to get to the point. I'm I sorry. I'm things, terrible at that. The things he was saying, the things he did have an effect on the world. So his yes. actions were weighty. Yeah. yeah. If if not the actions themselves. In yeah. an anime, you see the actions. I guess my... Books, you get to them. So yeah, I guess exactly. my only other problem with the character, Jason, was he... It did come off as if, like, yeah, you've watched... Not only have you watched Sword Online, that you're probably with another anime fan. Because so much of it came off as, like... This this that kind of typical Japanese anime protagonist. I don't think so. Don't where think he's so. this, I don't know. He felt some. He felt kind of Shinji. He felt kind of plot armor. I kind of felt, felt, we call it plot armor. Very, very, he felt kind of like the shield hero. The, the shield of, hero the book. The very point of his character, maybe yeah, more shield hero, but maybe the very point of his character was, I'm not going to take this. I'm going to take control of my life, which yeah. is the yeah. antithesis. Well, but I'm just saying, the, it's kind of kind of I want power. the whole world is kicking. I don't know. It's just that whole idea right, of the right. whole. You world have the, the whole. you know, that's not just anime. That's that's endemic. To Any protagonist genre. genre. Youth often feel like the world is beaten yeah. down. That's just how you feel when you're young. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's the other reason why it was kind of you realize. Yeah, the world is beating you down. It just wasn't beating you down as much as when you were when you were a kid. It was actually. Pretty nice to you, and then you get older, and you're like, "Oh no!" <laughs> that was kind of the other kind of disappointment about how taxes. It was a, it's a taxes. Taxes. Yeah, taxes. It's how you dark have to pay for my house I lived in. What is this? Yeah, I guess it's the only the only Food thing. Cost money. That's <laughs> upsetting about it's not just Alex. in the fridge. Sorry. That's kind of upsetting about Alex. Is that is that again? It's just that such that that there's not this and like oh well we were we were looking at him through the long, wrong lens. Yeah, that we only <laughs> saw him through the wrong All right, well, that was Awaken Online, Catharsis, Awaken Online Book One, Catharsis by yeah. Travis Bagwell. Uh, I think we all pretty much liked it, and good job, Travis, and read it, read it if you want. Oh, uh, oh, here's a good thing we can end on. Uh, book recommendations. What's a good book to recommend? Oh, okay. doesn't have to be this series, sure. just a book. Well, I know. I already got mine. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, you're going to take more time uh, to uh, uh, We are Bob. Dang it! No! <laughs> oh, <laughs> were we all going to recommend that book? No. I was going to say X Heroes. Sorry. I was going to recommend X Heroes. I have burned through four books in a week. <laughs> I'm so mad at you, Aaron. <laughs> Uh, we are Bob is a is a again it's kind of it's I would say it's, it's the weirdly Jason. literary Jason. Yeah. It's again it's another one of these books that's like uh, we know the genre genre books is kind of like it's self self it's self aware or self aware fiction, yeah. okay. which is kind of like the larger <laughs> genre that it's in. You take book two. No, go ahead. We are Legion. I, I said my thing. X Heroes is a five book series uh, of um, Walking Dead books, meets um, of Avengers. I think it's four books. Is it? No, because I'm on book four. I think it's five. I think well, it's, is it audio book? Yes. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. audible. I'll, I'll pick that up. It's My five bad. Peter I, Kleins. Uh, Peter Kleins is a fairly prolific writer. Uh, 
It's a book about what if again literary adjacent because it's a, it's what if superheroes were in a zombie apocalypse. But Less, better than Marvel zombies. Yeah, better than Marvel zombies. It was you know there are still some superheroes left at the beginning of the story, unlike Marvel zombies, where they're basically all gone by the beginning. It's like Magneto, <laughs> and that's it. That's uh, my book recommendation. Okay, okay. Carrie. Uh, the book I would probably recommend with, uh, that's in this genre that is sort of adjacent is NBCs by uh, one of our Drew favorite Hayes. Drew Hayes, who's one of our been our, one of our favorite. We'll probably review a Drew Hayes book next. I would imagine we haven't yeah. discussed what books next on the list, but it's definitely on our list. Uh, NBCs is is it's probably my favorite of his. It differs opinion differs at this table, <laughs> but uh, it's it's a book about. Uh, starts out following these players. Their GM is not a very good GM, <laughs> very bad GM. <laughs> and then what happens to the NPCs that are stuck with the effects of this bad GM? Okay, uh, I agree. I'm kind of mad at my fellows here because <laughs> I gave you first was 100 percent my first recommendation. I gave you a chance. Trevor's recommendation of X Heroes is also an excellent recommendation. So I'm going to have to go way off the side the book you guys haven't read and go with. Hard Luck Hank, Screw the Galaxy. Hmm. And I don't even know how to describe this book. You got me hooked here, already. Here, here, let me tell you how, what, what the title got me hooked. You're not even ready yet. Basically, here's what Hard Luck Hank is. If I had to describe it, it is a very indescribable book. Yeah. But imagine if, like, Joxer from Xena, yeah. there was a book about him. He was the main <laughs> character, except he was, like, in space. Yeah. And he was, like, a mutant with superpowers. That's basically this. Or, or maybe if Xander was in space, I would and say. Had I would say what if Crunk? What if because his voice, because especially the voice actor sounds like the guy who plays Crunk. Really though, who's the guy that plays Joxer? That actor, he plays like the same kind of character all the time. What, and Xena? And Xena. Uh, he's he's also, he was also in. Uh, he's, he's a guy from uh, uh, Evil Dead too, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, Ash. Ash. Ash is his Evil name. Dead? I don't oh. remember his name. But that's it. He plays the same. That's not character Joxer. Evil Dead. Isn't it the same guy? No. Well, it's the same character, though. You know what I'm saying? They're the same character type from yeah, Evil yeah. Dead and Jocks or yeah, kind of the, the hard, hard luck or you know, hard, hard, hard luck like he gets scrabbling, yeah. scrabbling moron. He's kind of um, a moron. Fall yeah. ass backwards in the situation. Exactly. 100% that. Anyways, that is the story. I don't even know how to, but it's it's indescribable what the book is. It's very... You got Hard Luck Hank versus the universe? Hard Luck Hank, Screw the Galaxy. Screw the galaxy. And then... There's like a whole series. There's a whole Hard Luck Hank, Basket of Crap, Hard Luck Hank, Prince of Suck. I'm sold. Hard Luck yeah, Hank, Hank Suck by Cosmos. <laughs> oh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Also. So there's about six of them here. Anyways, yeah. and that's my recommendation. So uh, I appreciate you guys sticking with us through this. Uh, sorry thing. we yelled a lot. Sorry we were loud. <laughs> that was awesome. And uh, 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 y'all we'll have see you in volume two. Yep. Bye, Internet.